So today I am showing you how I do my thumbnails for my YouTube videos because I get a lot of questions about DV, how do I make thumbnails like you? And I will tell you my thumbnails are okay. Like I like them, like they're not the best, okay? So there's actually better ways to make thumbnails. I'm actually really lazy with my thumbnails. Well, believe it or not, these thumbnails do not take me that much time. So that's why I like them is because I've got multiple channels to you know manage. I've obviously got the DV Talks channel. I've got DV Pay to Win. I've got my DV Plays one, which you're seeing here. I've got a DV Plays Core channel. And it's just so many thumbnails, right? So when you're doing daily videos, you don't really wanna be spending forever on your thumbnail. If you are not doing daily videos on multiple channels, then no big deal. Spend you know all the time you want. So there are way better thumbnails for Roblox you know like usually it's like the little character and you can kind of render it out you can pose it you can make like really cool illustrations there's all kinds of cool thumbnails you can do mine are just really quick so i'm going to show you how i do my thumbnails in this video so depending on the game i'm in i might do different types of screenshots but it really comes down to what am i featuring what am i showcasing am i showcasing like a new area for example or a new boss so for example if we were going to feature the slime king over here you know i would pretty much just run over to the slime king just to make sure my thumbnail is super clear what i'm featuring so you don't just go and like randomly take screenshots. Now, if you're a brand new channel, I would actually recommend not really focusing so much on your avatar and shoving too much information in your thumbnail. I see a lot of people have done that and it's kind of the wrong way of doing things. So if you're trying to store too much information in one thumbnail just because you feel like people aren't going to understand what you're trying to convey to them. But in reality, all you need to do is keep things simple. Focus on the thumbnail visuals. A lot of people actually don't spend enough time, I think, on the visuals or the screenshot and they focus too much on stuffing a bunch of text inside their thumbnail. So when you put too much text, people don't read the thumbnail is not meant to replace your title okay your title is meant to be where you place your text not your thumbnail so much i actually do put a lot of big like headline kind of text because it just it draws the attention as long as it's actually supporting the image that you're seeing next to it so how to invest in limited you see the visuals i show some limited items um you know the wizard boss you know i put the wizard boss there that way you actually know okay that's a wizard boss those are limited you know we're visiting islands um i'm pranking people i'm you know really focusing on very little text here there are times i've actually add a little too much text like right here islands beginner guide you know breeding and electrical that's a little too much text but you know because it's a beginner guide people are a little slow you know they slow down mentally a little bit and they're trying to take things in right they're a little bit they're ready to learn but like the best and worst crops that's that's good and then i show some crops right so it's just really supportive imagery to tell you what's going on just like this one how to use you know spawn blocks shortcuts and secret bases you know what you can use spawn blocks for and then i point at the little spawn block i don't have anything else in this visual i just show the spawn block by itself you know scepter step Static scepter, you see a big static scepter. So I, I really try to focus on whatever we're doing. So in this case, for the slime boss, you know, we just summoned him real quick. And then I'm gonna run out here and I'm gonna grab a sword just to show I'm doing some kind of combat. So we got our slime king here. And I might even just kind of get a good pose like this right next to him, just to make sure he's in the image. So let's kind of get a good shot of that. He's not really gonna do much damage to me. Let's take a shot. All right, screen grab. All right, we're going back to Photoshop. So now we're gonna do is a 1920 by 1080 image. And that's basically a standard screen resolution, right? That is a 69 aspect ratio as well, in case you're wondering. So we've got our image, our empty canvas here, right? And if you don't have Photoshop, you can buy like a subscription off of adobe.com. I think it's like 10 bucks a month or something like that. It's pretty cheap. So especially, you know, a lot of people are like, well, DV, that's, that's expensive. Well, you can also use GIMP. It's just a lot harder to use than this. Like I've actually pointed a lot of people to GIMP. It's similar than Photoshop, but it has a slightly more increased learning curve in my opinion. I've tried GIMP. It's just a little harder to get some stuff done. I'm going to scroll down to my latest screenshot. I'm going to go and copy that over here, right? And so pretty much we have a screenshot here and you can see the, the Slime King. And obviously this is not going to work as a thumbnail yet. But what we're going to do is we're going to also place some text in here. I like to use Google Fonts. If you don't know about Google Fonts, go to fonts.google.com and you can see all these different fonts you can use for free, right? So what I like to recommend is my style. Obviously, totally my style. I like text to be super legible. Look how small these thumbnails are. Now, imagine if they're smaller on a phone like this. You know, for any reason, you can't really see them, right? So what I want is for people to be able to read the text. If it's too thin, Thin or too stylized, it's going to be really hard for them to read the text. So I like to keep things really bold so that they can read what I've posted here. Some of my fonts have been a little small. So, you know, sometimes you can't read it, especially on mobile phones. So you'll improve over time. So what I like to do is I'd like to narrow this down. So inside here, you can say um, font properties. 
and you can go to thickness, right? So you can go to thickness and you want it to be thicker. So we're gonna go up, up, up a little bit. Right there is pretty good. And you don't need slants or anything like that. You don't need number of styles. Um, width, you can actually adjust if you want, if you want it to be a really wide font. Um, I actually don't think you want it to be that. I think you just leave it as is and just kind of look around for a good font that you don't think you would like. So I like to also, you know, do all uppercase. Now, the cool thing about this system is you can actually type in whatever your thumbnail um, headline is. So I'm gonna put like Slime King, how to beat Slime King. And so you can see how it's coming through. It's just kind of rendering all the fonts. It takes a little while. There we go. So that's kind of a cool font right there. I like this one as well, but I'm looking for like a magazine style headline. This one's really cool. I like this one, Luckiest Guy. This is actually a Roblox font. So Luckiest Guy here. So we can actually go and download this and let's go download the family. And I'm gonna go and install this real quick. All right, now that we have it installed, we can pretty much go like, okay, um, Slime King, right? So here's the text. I just put in some text. I'm just gonna kind of scale this up a bit. And if you need to learn Photoshop in general, this is not a Photoshop tutorial video. If you need to learn how to do Photoshop, there are many tutorials online, way better than what I could do um, on how to like use the text editor. It's pretty straightforward though. It's going to take you a little while, but you know, there's like a text, you know, object here, you know, there's text properties up here and such. And this is ultimately, you know, there's, it's all based on layers and such. So you need a little bit of a Photoshop tutorial if you've never used it before. Most people have, and it's really easy. There's so many people that use it, but um, control T is kind of what I'm using to scale things up and down, you know? So I've been using Photoshop pretty much almost all my life. So I know it pretty well. So let's go ahead and rotate this. I like to rotate my text because everyone does it straight. I like to rotate it sometimes. And so you can see I'm not using the right font. Yeah, I'm using my other font. So we're going to go to luckiest guy now. So we're going to type in luck here. So luckiest guy, we're going to select that font. Now you can see it's changed the style. Looks pretty cool. Actually, I like the font a lot. And I might even consider changing it in the future. I like it. And let's go ahead and grab this. We'll move this up a bit. So you see how I just scaled the image up. And you know, you know it's best not to scale images up if you can, because as you can see it gets kind of blurry so the original is going to always be the crispest and then when you scale it up it gets blurrier and blurrier and yeah you can use sharpen tools it just doesn't really improve the quality that much so slime king right so you can just kind of position wherever and i'm not going to put any other text it's just showing you an example of what i do and pretty much i'm also going to save this out as a template so let's go and just make this a template thumbnail it'll save it as a psd which basically means it's a layered file still so i can still move things around right so that way when i do my next um, video you'll see how quick i can do it so we can close this. What I also like to do here, it's a little bit more advanced, but I also like to change this to, um, I like to convert this and get this ready for smart filters. This is a new thing. It's kind of like a smart object, but I like to convert this to smart filters. And what that does is it gives me control to be able to adjust things, you know, color wise. Um, so if I go inside here, where's my layers at there? This is a different layout than what I'm usually doing. Um, go to adjustments and then we're going to do HDR toning. going to click OK. And then we're going to change this to just saturated. And so you see how bright it is? So we can kind of make adjustments to this it's pretty cool so you're basically adjusting what the visuals look like and you can add more detail reduce the detail see how crazy detail that is so many crazy like settings here and you can change the gamma it's just going to change the light of it exposure you can change the detail like i was doing we probably want it kind of medium you can adjust the shadows which is the dark spots in the the actual um image you can adjust the highlights so you can make the whites whiter or brighter you can adjust the vibrance here and saturation and um you can also adjust the strength if it's too much then you can reduce it and click on okay and then saving it is going to adjust this watch i'm going to save this like my screenshot just updated so that's a little extreme right it's really way too colorful compared to the original so if that's too much for you what i also like to do is i just go over to image adjustments and adjust the levels levels are basically going to adjust the brightness and stuff so you can kind of this is like the highlights this is like to bring it up like all the lights so you're adjusting only the whites and the height the bright stuff this is going to adjust the midtones, and this is going to adjust the dark stuff so if i bring this up it's going to increase the darkness and so on right so if we want to brighten it up i'm going to move the highlights up so the whites right here get brighter this adjusts the midtone, kind of medium like dark like shat you know mostly shadows and stuff and then and this is going to be like the blacks, right? So we kind of leave that alone. We're just going to move that up a bit. So the screenshot's not too dark because the original, here's the original, here's the new one, right? So I like to adjust that. And then I like to go to image adjustments and bring up the vibrance of the image. It's kind of, it's kind of dull. So I like to bring this up so that things are more colorful. And then I like to also increase the saturation just a little bit so that the greens really pop. So see this original? So this is the original, original, this is the new. So we save that just so we don't lose our progress because sometimes, you know, stuff happens. And 
then so now we got to adjust this text so what i like to do is i like to go to layer here and layer style and let's first add a drop shadow so we got a drop shadow as you can see this is what the style little window looks like so we just added a drop shadow it's already popping more so we're going to go and increase this a bit and then so that's just the size of the drop shadow and then i just increase the distance so it kind of floats off the background just a little bit and we're going to bring that up a little bit more and what's cool about this is anytime you make adjustments to this text here you can right click on your layer here copy the style and then paste it on whatever other layer you've done so we're going to go and paste that and now it's the same right so this is not a finished product so what i like to do here now i'm going to make this gold text now the reason why we use gold text is it pops right you don't want to really use reds if you can help it because youtube's already red you don't really want to be using reds inside your um, images whenever you can because people are going to ignore it they're going to kind of they've done a lot of studies on that on youtube and yellow really pops with stuff like it pops out of the page so i like to use yellow whenever i can so we're going to use kind of a goldish yellow color so we're going to go right here and then we're going to down here we're going to go with a little bit more of an orange kind of a little bit more of an orange but not too dark so you want to stay very vibrant with your image um like your colors and then i'm going to go for this i'm going to move this up a little bit in brightness just so we can get a little bit more brightness into that yeah the top of that now you can see it's kind of got a weird angle it's like weighted right here and so we need to rotate our gradient a little bit so it's evenly distributed i don't always do this with my thumbnails you'll notice my my gradients kind of are lopsided because i just i get a little lazy with it so um you know truth comes out i'm a little lazy with some of my thumbnails so right here though on the next one we're doing a stroke you'll notice so if i increase this you can see what it looks like so obviously it's on the inside of the text you can also adjust it to be on the outside of the text if you wanted to which is pretty cool now you what we really want to do with this is we simply want to bring it down and we can also do the center so it's kind of like in between right it's not quite on the inside or outside but you see notice if i go big it kind of does increase the um it kind of goes inside of the text a little bit so i kind of want it like right about here and what we're going to do is we're actually going to do a gradient like the out the inside here so we're going to do a gradient and you see it just it defaults to black and white so we're going to change this to be like kind of a gold so we're going to change we're going to select another gold color here and let's go kind of brighter here it's going to be a little orangish and then on the other side we're going to go a little darker on that orange look again bring it up so it's pretty close so you can already see what's going on with the preview here and then we do it we need to adjust the angle just like before like that now you can see it's, it's already coming together it's looking a lot better than the white text that we had so it's going to go and paste this onto this layer as well so you can already see it's it's already standing out really well it's so like if you're scrolling through it's a slime king it pops out from the the you know clouds like the clouds are white so if you had white text the clouds obviously you know kind of conflict with this so now what we want to do is we want to make this pop even more right so we go back to layer styles and we're going to go to stroke and we basically just added another stroke by clicking that so you can see we're adding another stroke we're going to make this on the outside only right we're going to select black and so what we're going to do is on this side here we're going to go out like that and you can see it's getting a it makes everything sharp right so we can also bring this down so let's go ahead and um, move this down so that's behind the gold gradient we already put on the outside of that because if, it, if it's above it then it obviously takes out the gradient we just did on the stroke so you see it, it's now behind it and so you can kind of increase that if you want to you just want to find a really nice place for it and by adding this stroke it also kind of eats into a little bit of our drop shadow right we do all kinds of things with our drop shadow it's really up to you on what kind of style you want and then um, so i'm going to copy the same style down under on the king you're going to notice a big difference with the king text boom so now it's really easy to see when you're scrolling right and so the other thing you can do you can put like arrows and stuff if you wanted to like if you really wanted this guy like you know maybe the focus is on this king here what you could do is you can actually you know select the background here which is this image and you can make kind of like a cool outline around so using the polygon tool here this is like a selection tool okay so you can see like little marquee this is basically you're making a selection so right here is it's this little polygonal lasso tool and i don't do this a whole lot but you could basically just kind of draw around or select around it it's almost like you're cutting it out with a scissor but you're clicking on different little points here to make like a border right so you're clicking clicking and you're clicking to the points where you want it to go and then you know the grass is going to be a big pain but that's okay kind of want to go around my body to here we'll go up like right to here this will this will be fine for an example and next what you can do is you can go to layer and then new and then new layer is basically you're creating a new layer via copy right so see now we got a copy of the background and then what you can do is if you wanted to you can add a glow to this like this you know 
know it's kind of weird having it right here but you can also do a stroke you can do like an inner stroke and you can make it like a white so there's all kinds of things you can do for like really highlighting whatever you're trying to you know point out um you can do that and the reason why we did a copy this is we don't we, we don't want to destroy like you know our original image here so that's why we do that so this is pretty much how i do my thumbnails um you know sometimes i'll do other things like i'll rotate the you know the image like this or that because everything's always so flat and normal looking everything's so level i like to kind of break it up and make it a little goofy so i'll just rotate things you know if i see something something like this then i can just clean it up with a little finger tool here so we can go click on this background and then we can basically get rid of that by zooming in get the finger smudge tool and what's cool about this is if i see something kind of bleeding into my my image i just kind of drag down and it just basically it's like it's like smudges it right it's almost like it's water like watercolors or acrylics and you can do stuff like this so that it get, gets rid of that some of that ui that the devs added but you know you can't really notice that right i mean unless you really focused on it you don't really notice it's gone now look at we got this we got this little pointer here you might end up with this sometimes same thing come back in here go inside this um smart object here zoom in and all we're going to do is we're going to kind of just paint over so we're going to select with our little color dropper see the little eyedropper right here we're going to select that we're going to paint over it make sure we got the right color yep we got the right green select a paintbrush we want to make sure our, our size is not too big here so there's our size and you can also go up here to adjust your size for your paintbrush and we're just going to paint down and then we'll select this color select this color people really don't care you, you you wouldn't believe the number of times i don't know if you've ever noticed that i've painted stuff in my thumbnails i doubt you ever noticed because you don't care like you're not looking for it you're just looking at the video so there we go done saved mouse pointer gone so that is how you can touch up your thumbnails and like this is pretty much it so say we wanted to do a new boss you know maybe we wanted to do like the wizard boss just type in wizard shrink that down type that boss wizard boss you keep the text where it's at select the background so we can swap this out there's a good shot of our boss take that screenshot we're going to scale it up now we need to move our text a little bit so it's not blocking us adjust this a little bit or this way if we want take that again adjust it maybe the wizard you know maybe the boss text is too much we can also rotate it if we need to and then we can make our vibrant adjustments to the background and thumbnails done save it out and post it so that's pretty much how i do my thumbnails they're really easy like i said they're super easy i really like this font though this is cool anyway i hope this was helpful to you for how to make thumbnails for your youtube channel if it was please do me a favor and hit that like button and maybe share with a friend or consider subscribing one or the other be sure to leave a comment on anything else you'd like to see and learn how to do for your channel thanks again and i will see you all in the next video peace